for the real ones Have a toast for the uh, Let's have a toast for the real ones Let's have a toast for the real ones Let's have a toast for the real ones Let's have a toast for the real Let's have a toast for the real ones Have a toast for the real Let's have a toast for the real ones What's up, what's up, what's up, everybody? It's your girl T from Adventures of Spirits and welcome to Spirit Scrutiny. And today we're gonna talk about why you don't like red wine. Why don't you all like red wine? I get comments, I get text messages, even just from family and friends and people that I talk to. I just don't like red wine. Well, tonight we are going to explore two wine grapes specifically that will help you transition into liking red wine. Okay, um, let's see who we have in the chat here. Hey, Wanston, hey, Leo, how you doing? How you doing? Ooh, today was a day, I'm telling y'all, today was a day just totally just totally off kilt today. Just totally off kilt today. But other than that, I'm 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 back at it, and we're gonna get we gonna get through this live. I was determined to get through this live today um, because there's just so many people that's like, I just like Moscato. I just like the white wines. I like the rosé. Even if I do red, it has to be a sweet red, but it doesn't have to be a sweet red. Trust me, these two grapes. If you drink these first, it'll help branch you off into the um, the red wines. Hey, Keisha, how you doing? Hey, Keisha, happy Wednesday. I'm late, but it's Wednesday. <laughs> oh, everybody's speaking to each other. Um, so today we're going to be talking about two grapes. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, Nebbiolo. They're Italian wines, of course. Nebbiolo. And we're also going to be talking about Barbera di Asti. So um, both of these, um, both of these wines basically are um, the tannins is well balanced along with um, the fruit. And so therefore, that is the difference between these two grapes, these two types of wines and other red wines. Um, some other red wines are higher in tannins. They're higher in a, their acidity levels. Um, in addition to what the how the grapes were, you know, um, how the grapes were uh, harvested, where they grow, the soil plays a major role. But um, these two grapes here are Italian grapes, um, and I can tell you that trust me, I've actually transitioned about five to eight people from white wines to red wines. So hopefully um, after this episode, you will go out if you're not a red wine drinker or if you're like, eh, I don't really like the taste, that you'll go out and get both of these um, wines and taste them and start to develop your palate to so you can be open to other good wine because I can tell you there's a whole lot of wine out there um, that you really miss out on if you only stick to um, white wines. So let's see who we, else we have in here this evening. All right. Body speaking to each other. Hey, Yolo, how you doing? How you doing? Bring on the red wine. I know that's right. Don't worry. We about to get into it. We about to get into it. Hey, Controversial Cruising, how's it going? How's it going? Yeah, Keisha's introducing and saying hello to everybody. Everyone's speaking to each other. It's good to see you on here, Scott. Um, YOLO saying hello. And then you love red wine. I'm glad you do, YOLO. Um, what's your favorite wine? Um, for those who do drink um, red wine, put your favorite wine in the actual chat. And if you don't drink red wine, 
put in the put in the chat why you don't like red wine. Cabernet Sauvignon, that's so broad, Yolo. But you you right. But you know what? One thing about the Cabernet Sauvignon, because it's grown in so many places, and it can be, you know, um, they'll have multiple vineyards all over, whether it's across the world or locally. It is just it just very diverse in the actual Cabernet Sauvignon. It's like I can't go to a restaurant and say, give me that. And I know it's going to taste the same every time. You know, like I just um, the wine, the red wine that I prefer is like San VC and Tempranillo. Malbec is my number one. The one thing about Malbec is it own, they only have it growing the last, I say, 18 years. They started growing it only in Argentina because the actual grape can survive there and it doesn't get rancid too quick. They tried to grow it in Europe and it, it just didn't last as long. But I just like going to a restaurant and being able to ask for a certain um, grape. I usually order by the grape, not by the maker, because I try to I try to choose wines that is going to taste the same no matter where I go outside of some of the white wines, of course. But um, Cabernet Sauvignon is your favorite. OK, so let's see. Um, by saying hello. Hey, hey, Steve, how you doing? Should I be on the YouTube channel? You can if you like, but um, I can still see you there. You don't have to be. You can comment and I can see you as well. Hey, Sheila, how you doing? How you doing? That's the bourbon friend right there. Steve. White, you prefer white? I know you prefer white. I know. Is this on Wanston, Leo, or do both of y'all prefer white? And tell me why you don't like red. Or have you not tried red? Wanston or Leo. Hey, Famous, how you doing? How you doing? You speaking to me in the chat? Oh, it gives you a headache. Yeah, it may be the sulfates, but let me tell you a little secret. If you're going to drink wine, regardless of what it is, and actually sulfates are much more higher in the white wines than they are the red wines, and it all depends on, you know, where it grows. But um, if you take, like for people who take uh, allergy medicine, like they, you naturally take antihistamines daily to keep your allergies away. Very seldom will you get headaches when you drink wine because the sulfates that if you take an antihistamine, it, it fights off the sulfates. So if you know you're going to drink wine, what I do, I'm not going to tell you what to do because I don't need anybody on YouTube trying to tell me. I told them to, um, to, um, to take some medication and drink wine in the same day and then something happened to you, you're going to blame me for it. I'm not telling you to do that. I'm telling you what I do. I take a little 25 milligram Benadryl. Those of you who get sleepy with Benadryl, if you're already taking something like Claritin or um, um, Zantac or whatever the other um, allergy medications are, I take that in the morning if I know I'm going to be drinking it later in the day. And for some reason, I just won't get a headache. But that depends if I'm going to be drinking a lot of wine. If I'm just going out for dinner, I'm not going to do that. But if I'm hosting a tasting, if I'm doing a tasting, or if I know I'm going to be at a party, I'm going to be drinking um, a lot of wine, I make sure I take that Benadryl at the start of my day, and it actually keeps the, um, the headaches away. So, you know, just a little insight of what works for me. All right, let's see here, Keisha. You definitely have me researching to expand beyond my NA, NA sparkling wines, okay? I had no idea that there were so many types. Oh, yes, there's a whole lot of wines. And my series isn't even, those are just the most known wines. There are so many other grapes, um, I can tell you. But the ones that I'm doing on the series, this series, it are just the, the widely known grapes that you will find. And most of them you will find at 100%. There are other grapes, but usually those grapes, they don't sell them as 100% in the bottle. They usually blend it with another grape. So I just stuck with the, um, the most known ones. Um, everyone's speaking to each other. Let's see here. You like my T-shirt? 
I like wine and maybe three people. Yeah, a couple of more people, but you know, I like wine and maybe some people. All right, everyone's saying hello. All right, everyone's saying hello, hello. Oh, so pink Moscato and Chardonnay. Ooh, Chardonnay, that don't give you a headache. Let me tell you something. I don't care if I take a Benadryl or not. Chardonnay is just not my friend. Now, I, let me let me let me correct that for a minute. Chardonnay is Chardonnay is very oaky, and I don't like oaky, strongly oaky tasting wine. Okay. However, they do um, they do use stainless steel to age the wines. And I actually like when they actually um, do their wines in stainless steel versus the oak barrels. Those Chardonnays, I will drink. And and there's not a lot of them, but whenever I find a Chardonnay and it's um, with stainless steel, that's the one I will buy. So if you ever see me drinking a Chardonnay, do know that's that's the only reason why. If If it's not stainless steel, I won't drink it. All right, everyone's talking to each other. All right, let me see, let me see. I like a good Malbec too. Oh yeah, Yolo. That and tell me this, Yolo, isn't that taste consistent? The Malbec doesn't change. It just doesn't change. I don't care what name is on the bottle. If it says Malbec, I don't care if you go in Olive Garden, if you go into this uh, widely known steakhouse, if you go into the club, it doesn't matter. If they sell Malbec, Malbec is going to give you the exact taste every single time. Now, if you know of Malbec's taste and different, please let me know and let me know which ones they are so I can try them and see if I like the other ones. I love cooking with wine. Yes. So famous. Uh, I'll cook with wine, too, but usually it's the wine that I don't like. Basically, if I if I get a red wine and I don't particularly care for it, then I'm going to cook with it. Other than that, I'm drinking it. I'm not cooking with a good wine. I'm going to drink the good wine, but I'll cook <laughs> with, the, with the wine I don't care about. <laughs> uh, Non-alcoholic or alcohol removed. So you drinking sparkling cider, Keisha? It's okay. You could drink sparkling cider. I'm, a, you know, what? I'm gonna find you some good uh, non-alcoholic ciders. Actually, I'm gonna do um, uh, a couple of um, episodes on mocktails. So, famous Keisha, those of you who you know don't really drink alcohol or maybe not drink alcohol all the time and prefer the non-alcoholic drinks. I will do some more mocktails. I just did one last night with um, your favorite couple. Um, and I will be doing another one again with Team Reese. Um, but I will um, uh, do some, maybe do two episodes of, of like multiple type of um, mocktails. I need a non-alcoholic wine. <laughs> Never had that is basically juice. Yes, wine is fruit, famous. It is fruit. Fermented fruit. Crushed fruit is wine. That's all it is. It's old, chumped up grapes. That's what it is. That's what it is. <laughs> Uh-oh, y'all. I hear steps. Yes, very consistent. Favorite is cab is J. Lo Brown. Okay, okay. I have to try that one. I probably have some on my um, rack here. What are you doing down here? You don't drink wine. Visiting. You visiting? Yes. Okay, y'all. Now I'm gonna get into this wine. They can't see you. Too tall. It's too tall for you. Hey Griffin, how you doing? Christy Joe, how you doing? How you doing? Welcome in. Welcome in. Everyone saying hello. Let me get down to the bottom. Okay. So all right, okay, folks saying, hey, TJ. Hey, everybody. I'm bum rushing the party because I was booze upstairs. I ain't got to cut no wheels tonight. I'm going to come down here and look at the wine bottle. Well, then you need to get a glass then if you're going to drink some wine with me. 
There's a wine glass right in there. What kind of wine is it? It's red wine. I'm about to get into it now, what the wine is. Okay. So you just listen. Well, you was you wasn't part of this preparation. So you're gonna you're gonna be you're gonna listen just like they're listening. So you don't know what's about to go on because I prepared it. They don't know what's about to go okay. on. What more wine glasses? It's it's one in there, right there, in there on the table. Thank you. Lord, y'all, why y'all, y'all, I tell y'all, pretty Timmy in the house, Lord have mercy. That's right. <laughs> Everybody right. saying hello. Everybody saying hello. Hey, Heath, how you doing? Welcome in. I haven't seen you all for a long time. I know I don't get on Facebook that much, like actually actively on there. I just go on there sometimes. You, I know the family um, looking good, son. Your son is growing up. He grown now, ain't he? All right, let's go, GT. <laughs> let's go, Georgia Tech. Yes, that's our baby girl's um, university. She goes there. Yes. All right, so let's get into this. Let me mark this so I know where I stopped at. All right, so today we're going to actually, we're going to do the Barbera first. So um, as I stated, um, both of these uh, grapes are two grapes that people who are non-red wine drinkers will want to try first. Develop your palate. And trust me, if someone was to switch it to something else, you begin to, you'll begin to like it. So let me get this up on the screen for you. All right. There we go. So this one here, oh, I'm sorry, y'all, I got skipped. There we go. So this one here is Barbera, and it's basically a red wine, and it's a, uh, it's a grape, and the Barbera grape is from Piedmont region in North Italy. So both of these are from Italy. Both of them are from Northern Italy, okay? Um, they are low in tannins which helps with that red wine taste that a lot of people for some reason don't seem to like. There is very low in tannins and it's a very high level of acidity, but because it has very low and high acidity, it balances out. This one here is actually a balance of both. Um, the aroma of this is like, it reminds you of like very fruity. Okay. But don't get it twisted. It's not sweet. Okay. But it's also not extremely dry either. So it's a very good balance of, of both. So sweet is nowhere in here. Let's just say it's just a balance of like bold, a, a bold fruit taste. Um, so put you in a mind of red cherries and blackberries um, in terms of your smelling it. And the tasting of it is cherries, blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, and a hint of vanilla, mainly because this one, um, it, it for some reason, it... Um, pulls on the oak in the barrel. So this one, you will taste some of the actual um, vanilla. So to taste this one, um, this one here is a 2020. Um, it's from the Vietti Vineyard and it's a family owned vineyard. Um, and it's from, and I'm going to try to pronunciate this, um, Piemont Piemontese Piemontese. Look, Piemontese. Yeah. That's what it is. Well, you know what? You're exactly right. Piemontese. That's exactly what the pronunciation See? is. Thank you very much. See? Um, and it's from that wine region. Um, and this actually ranked in the top 5% of the world um, when it comes to the Barbera um, wine itself. And it pairs very well with chicken, you know, poultry, pasta, veal, and pork. And the average cost of this is 22 and actually, I got this from my wine club, and the price on here is just 19 bucks. So just so you know. So we're going to open this. Oop, I forgot my scorer. So what's the score? That you're about to find out. Is that the board that you write on? When no, on no, no. Board? If you go in the drawer where all my tools are, it's this little flat black thing, and it's shaped like this. Mm -hmm. It's black, and it looks like it has metal on the inside of oh, it. I know. Bring, yeah, bring that to me, please. So since I didn't open up the bottles to let them aerate, what I'm going to do is actually use an aerator. So let me get back on the screen here. So I'm actually going to use an aerator since I didn't open up the bottles. What you want to do with red wine a lot of times is let it oxygenate, let it breathe, 
is basically what it says. So let it breathe for about 30 minutes or so before you start drinking it. The fastest way is, you know, a carafe that you can have um, or a, um, darn it, what is it called? Um, decanter. Um, that's what it's for. You pour the wine in there and you can swirl the whole, you know, the whole bottle of the wine in there. That way when you pour it, it airs out and then you can just pour um, wine throughout the evening and not have to worry about you pouring from the bottle. Another quick way to aerate your wine quickly, pour the sucker in a, in a blender and just turn the blender on high for a couple of seconds and Pour it back in a bottle or pour it in your decanter or pour it in a carafe, whichever way you want to serve it. So all you need to do is whip it and let the air come through. So that's basically what it is. But since I did not leave these open, um, I'm going to use my aerator. So this is an aerator. And basically, when you pour the wine in the top of it, it actually spins on the inside. And on the up opposite side, you get aerated red wine. Okay. Um, for those who believe that it's probably, what are you doing? It's the little one that should just be in the drawer. Okay, well, I'm going to let you find it. But until then, I need, um, at least give me a knife or something so I can cut this open, please. Thank you very much. Okay. See what I'm saying, y'all? So, anyway, um, what was I saying? Aeration. So, basically, it. Yeah, but for those people who say you don't have to aerate it, I promise you this. Drink this red wine when you first open it. Any red wine. First drink it when you first open it. Tell me what it tastes like. Then, I want you to sit your glass aside for about 30 minutes to an hour and then taste it again. I guarantee you it will taste different. And as well, to really whip it with oxygen, put it in a blender, let it whip, and then do it or pour it through an aerator and you let me know how it tastes. I guarantee you it's different. White wine usually doesn't need to be aerated, but it actually... Um, also tastes better when it's, it's been open for a while. Um, most of it does. So just be mindful of that before you taste it and you give an opinion of it. Let it aerate. Give it some time and take your time before you actually um, make a decision about it. All right. So let's see here. While he's getting my scorer and the scorer people, and I'll show you, is basically you put it around the rim and you basically cut the rim of the actual um, wine bottle, the plastic off, so it exposes your cork. Now, I could just go old school and just stick the, uh, you know, the wine opener through the plastic and so forth, but we're not going to do that. We're going to open it up the proper way, and then if I'm going to show you um, what you need in order to open it, that's what you need. Or you can just use like a little a little knife or something and just cut the sides of it and then rip the top off, whichever one you, you prefer. Um, let's see. I know more people came in while he's getting this so I can open this up. See who we have, who else we have in the chat here. Okay. Okay. House of X was saying hello to Timmy. Uh, everybody's saying hello. Hey Rod, how you doing? Thank you for joining in. Thank you. Thank you. I saw the notification, but I didn't know y'all was live. What's up, T and Timmy? We doing fine. And, and Spirits uh, Scrutiny is actually my segment. Uh, Timmy just made an appearance today because he heard me live down here. So he came on down. But usually, usually, no, I open. It's a, excuse me, y'all. Let me go get the thing to open it. Okay. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. 
got a whole lot of fucking stuff my hand in there. Stabbing. I said, boy, mm. I'm going to get you in the job. Anybody want a good assistant? I don't eat a lot. Except for, uh, I'm kind of tired of doing the cheese sandwiches. I don't know the whole sandwich. You know, but uh, anyway. You eat sandwiches because that's what you be wanting to eat. I don't make you eat sandwiches. Don't let don't let them people think that I be making you eat sandwiches. Where's my score? Here we go. It was in the other bag. You in my way. Excuse me. Thank you very much. All right, everybody. So this is a score. Okay. On the inside, there's metal. So you can actually squeeze. So what you want to do is you put it on top of here. See the metal? And you put it right on the top of the wine bottle and you squeeze it and you turn it. And all it does is it just cuts the plastic, cuts the paper, see? Takes it right off, see? Just takes it right off. That's the score. Why is this knife and stuff over here? Because I couldn't find that score. Knife would do the same thing. Stick it do in. Do you need a microphone? Yeah. There you go. Knife will do the same thing. Stick well, I'm not trying to kill myself, and I don't need them oh. somewhere trying to use a knife to open up the uh, the bottle of wine. Don't do the pretty tender way now, because I don't want nobody trying to sue me. Now, for those who don't know how to open up a bottle of wine, there's all different types of bottle uh, wine bottle openers. This one, I call it the tea bottle opener here. So basically, what you want to do is you want to put the screw right in the middle of your cork and you want to hold it down and you just want to turn this until it screws down. And then your T actually, the arms actually go up. You screw it all the way down. And then you just pull it on up like this. And then you can wiggle it. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Okay. And since we're opening up bottles, I'm just going to go ahead and open up the other one. That way we don't have to go through this again. I'm going to score the top. Out. Make sure your uh, the wine opener is in the center of your cork. The reason I say that is because if it's not in the center of your cork and you try to um, you try to go around the edges, you can actually break your cork or you know like um, what you call strip it, and then you won't be able to pull it out, and you have to pull it out a different type of way which we're not about to do today. That'll be a, a different episode um, that I will show like what to do when certain things just don't go right when you're trying to open up a bottle of wine or you get wine and the cork is broke or whatever. So how do you get your stuff out? We'll do that on another um, segment. However, right now, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on this Barbera. And um, this Barbera is a Barbera Diasti. Um, and we already stated what it's going to taste like. So I'm going to use my aerator. And I'm going to pour it through the top. And it's going to aerate. Okay. And I'm just going to pour a taste. Where is my napkin? All right. No, I got napkins right here. Thank you. And so 
In my earlier segments, I talked about what to do with wine, but you would follow the same thing. You would basically swirl it around and aerate it, even though I did already aerate it here. I like to do it again. And um, at the same time, you want to pay attention to what the color is. You know, this color here is, um, uh-oh, y'all, I'm sorry. Where am I? There I go. There's nothing in there. I didn't give you anything. Yet. Exactly. Ain't nothing in here. Well, I'm sorry. You you weren't supposed to be here today. My brain wasn't on there. I'm sorry. See how it is when you try to be a guest and pop up for a little view. That's enough. That's enough. Okay, calm down. There you go. Now. Anyway. Let's see. You know what? You 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 silly. You you silly. I I know I got a little bit of little. You bit gotta of twirl it this way. There oh. you go. Okay. Just 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 slightly. There you go. All right. Now this one here is a very 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 deep, mm -hmm. um, a deep um, ruby red. That's the color that it is. If you see it in the light, you can't see the light through here, but it almost looks black on the screen. This is, when I look at it through the light, this is actually giving you like a deep ruby, um, a ruby red. And in terms of the aroma, it's actually exactly what it says it is. I, I smell, very, it's very much fruit. Cherries, blueberries, raspberries. You smell all of that, right? Mad, what you dog, smell? mad dog 2020. Ain't no mad dog 2020. Mad dog 2020. You know what? It smells good. Ooh, it smells so good. Mm -hmm. I love this. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, y'all. Could be Slick Rick. It's not Slick. Wild I Let's taste this wine. and see how it tastes. I like it. Don't taste like no Slick Rick. Okay. First off, you don't like red wines. This is a transition wine. So let it sit for a while. Okay. And then you can come back to it. Okay. Got to develop your palate. You're not going to want red just after today's episode. Okay. okay? Same thing for y'all. You might taste it and go. But I promise you, if you compare it to another red that you've been tasting that you say, I don't like it. This one is a good compromise because it does give you the fruit flavors tannins are not too too high it's not too oaky it's a very good balance with both of them so i'm gonna sip it one more time before i get to these comments i'm gonna sip it you're gonna try it again okay figure you'll let it aerate for a while all right let's see here everyone's talking to each mm. other let's see here mm. hey there rod Griffin. Ah, hey RJ, how you doing? Thank you for coming in. Welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Let's just say I have y'all running and listening. I'm getting ready for my live. Okay then, uh, Rob. Well, look, after we finish ours, if you still on, then I'm gonna come come on over that way. All right, let's see. Everybody's saying hello. Let me see what this says. Interesting. So much hey, to know. Yes, yes, that's Miss Keisha. Hey, Keisha. <laughs> How that walk going, Keisha? Are you going over to the other side of the park yet? Did you make it over there yet? Say, okay, Griffins, let's say old school, old school, most days, greedy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, everyone's saying hello, hello, hello. Timmy, that's a big knife, sir. Exactly. Thank you, Keisha. Oh, it just and you know, it's so many other sharp things over there he could have bought over here. My bad. And, and actually, believe it or not, there usually is a wine opener, but I usually keep it upstairs or I use it um like if I'm packing excuse me, like a bag to go to someone else's house and I'm taking wine. I have like my little wine kit and it's not a big wine opener like this, but it is one where you do have the cork and you do have the, the hook 
but then it also has the little scora built in that you can actually do what you need to do with this that is actually on the actual um, wine opener. So um, let me see here. Hey, Tater Dom, how you doing? Hey, Welcome Tater Dom, in. how you doing? Cheers to you. Everybody's saying, hey, hey, hey. Let's see. You said, I've been... I've been needing one of these, one of those shit. I've been needing one of those. Which one? Which one are you talking about? You talking about the uh, the scorers, the drink itself, or the uh, the openers, or the knife? <laughs> what you what you need, Rod? <laughs> what you need? <laughs> oh gosh, what do you need? Let's see here. <laughs> Hey, Shatora, how you doing? Welcome in. Haven't seen you in a while. How's it going? Hope everything's good. Oh, we can't see the pouring into the aerator. Okay, thank you. I'll do it again. I'll do it with the, the second one. Cabernet is great with... What up, Reaper? Hey, Reaper. Oh, that's right. You like Cabernet. Okay, Cabernet Franc or Savion Reaper? Let's see. Shout outs to Eventuals and Pretty Timmy. Shout out to you too, Reaper. Thank you for joining. Shout out, Reaper. All right. So we didn't see um, the, the pouring of the aerator for um, this one. So I'm going to um, put it on the bigger screen. Oh, shoot. Uh, pass me my um, House of X glass over there for me, please. <coughs> Now, remember what I said. Normally, you would drink wine out of a stem glass because you want to keep, yes. No, the the stemless wine glass, the one next to it, right there. This. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, because you don't want to hold the glass and then warm up your, um, and actually warm up your, uh, your wine. But because this is red wine, in red wine, you can drink room temperature. I mean, you don't want to drink it hot. But you can drink room temperature. So you normally can drink it in a glass like this. Shout out to House of X. Um, but um, I'm going to do this because I don't feel like taking out a whole nother stem glass and getting back up again. So we're going to pour um, the uh, ne Nebbiolo is what the pronunciation say because it's Italian. I'm going to pour it and then I'll talk about it. But um, with the aerator here, you're going to put the aerator here and you're just going to pour it through the top. And what it actually does is it actually spins inside. It actually whips it almost like a, when the, the fluid goes down, it spins it. So that's why if you notice it was wider coming out at the bottom. So um, that's the aerator. And this one has a very different color. Actually, um, this Nebbiolo looks very different than the um, Barbera. Um, and this one here is, hold on. This one is Nebbiolo. And Nebbiolo, let me remove me out the way. There I go. All right. So the Nebbiolo is actually, again, a red wine from Piedmont region in North Italy. Um, it's very robust with tannins and a high level of acidity, meaning, and so if you notice, as long as there's a balance of both, then you're not going to have that that uh, that uh, very I call it a oaky, tanny taste. You know, there's verbiage for that, but I have to um, find out what that terminology is. But they call it's the tannins basically that a lot of people don't like. Um, but that's only because, of course, you know they age it in the barrel, so of course it's going to have those tannins. But when you have the acidity level that balances it out it actually makes these very, very drinkable for the non-red wine drinker. And again, this is another one with aromas of fruit. Ooh, this one, this one smells, that one is very like bold with the fruit. This one here is, you smell it, it's just a very more, is more subtle smell it. It's like subtle, right? Mm -hmm. What you mean, uh, what's wrong with it? I don't know. Maybe I might have to get a sample of it. 
you might have to get a sample of it. But I we didn't taste it yet. Oh, you just want me to pour it in your glass. Okay, I'll pour it in your glass. Mm. That's not and the color of it is, you know, when you see it in the light, it gives off like a more like a, a gold ruby color. Um, but um it it actually is it has more it has cranberry aroma to it in addition to the cherries and your raspberries basically i actually smell the cranberries and not just the red cherries and raspberries as the statement says but the taste of it i'm curious to see if the taste is actually better than this one or whether the taste is similar to the two with the balance so you got it. You you swirled mm -hmm. yours. Mm -hmm. See, this is skills right here. See, I could barely move it. Just bam, 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 bam. See, it's easy. I'm not a connoisseur. I'm just a wheel cutter. I oh. Always know that. Okay. Just so you all know, both of them will serve the same purpose. However. If you're just starting off with red, I would say start off with Nebbiolo first and then do the Barbera. This is more bold with its flavor, which some of you may like, but this one is a little more subtle, if that makes sense. You, you understand what I'm saying? This one's a lot more subtle. What, what's your face saying? So it's like feet and toes. Ain't no feet and toes. You really taste feet and toes. How feet and toes? Because you ain't, you don't suck on my feet and toes. So how you know what they taste like? I, I got a remembrance of some feet and toes. Some remembrance. From back in the days. Oh, you was about feet and toes back in the days? But you ain't feet and toes now. I grew out of feet and toes. Now, you need me to put one in your mouth? Nope. Okay, then. You talking about feet and toes. I'm just saying because I ain't getting none of that treatment. Anyway, anyway, y'all, uh, let me just tell you about this wine specifically. Um, this one is a 2019. Um, it's a Franco Sierra vineyard um, that is it, another family owned vineyard out in Italy. Mm -hmm. um, and Monferrato, Monferrato, and trust me, I am butchering up that name altogether. Um, but that's the wine region that it comes from. Um, and then this one is ranked top 10% of the world um, within its category. And it pairs very well with like your lamb, your beef, your deer, your um, bison, and, and poultry as well. And the average cost is just like $26. So mm. these are in the 20s. This, that's, that's a good price for a good red, red wine. And just so you know about the alcohol content, the alcohol content of this one that we're drinking now is just 13.5% um, alcohol, which is what you would call 27 proof. Um, and then this one here is do, 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 because sometimes they list it, sometimes they. It's down at the bottom. No, yeah, it's at the bottom. Let me see. Right there. 15%. So, what was it, 15 or 19? 15. So, this one is higher. And that might be why this is a little more so. I know it's just a, like a 2.5% um, or like a 1.5% difference. But I can tell you that the difference between the two, this one is more subtle. It's, it's almost like, yeah. You know, yeah, drink this and, you know, yeah, drink this and um, take your time with easing into the reds. And then when you sort of graduate a little bit, then go to the Barbera, which is another easy drinker, um, before you jump into your Cabernet Sauvignons or your um, Pinot Noirs or your Cabernet Francs and Malbacs and, and St. Joe VCs and things of that such. So, um Let's see if there's any questions in the chat and any comments. One second here. Hold on here. Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? There needs to be a button that just say, hey, everybody. <laughs> 
Y'all are seeing Oshitora. Y'all looking good. We are watching on our way to Texas. Oh, you going to Texas? How long y'all gonna be in there? Uh Shatora, is that for business or or just personal? Y'all too late for the eclipse. It was yesterday or day before yesterday, but I know it's already gone. Well, it's all on YouTube. <laughs> trust me. If you didn't see it there, you can see it on there. Turn around, come back, come back. <laughs> Montrese said, what's up, king and queen? How you doing, Montrese? What's Welcome up, in. What's up? Thank you for joining. Uh, let me see. Raj said, the thing that takes the metal the metal paper off. Oh, okay. Okay. The score. They call it to score your bottle. It's a scorer. Um, I've, out my, <laughs> I've cut my finger so many times. Yeah, but your best thing, what you want to do, Rod, is you can get the scorer and squeeze um, or you can get the, um, you know, the, the wine nice. opener that actually has, and it's not actually sharp where it won't cut you, but it actually is like, it looked like a Swiss army, like a Swiss army, um, contraption. Like you got your corkscrew and the thing that when you, uh, the lever is what I call it. And then you have one that lays on top that, um, uh, actually looks like a point. And what you do is you actually just hold it like this against the bottle and you just do this across it, you know? So it's almost like you're doing this like this, but it's not a big long knife. It's just, it looks like a little nose, if you will. Sort of like the, almost looks like the tip of your, of the screw of the wine thing. It, it's encased in something and you just hold it against the bottle and just, run the bottle around but um those are available all over the place but yes this is much easier much cleaner and it it doesn't you know aesthetically it, it keeps the bottle looking nice instead of it tearing and you tearing off the paper and everything french bordeaux yes has a bunch of tannins and kills me every time really um, I actually like Bordeaux. To me, Bordeaux is to me is like more on the lines of like my Malbecs and stuff. Um, it you feel it's a lot of tannins. Now, are you talking about the white or the red Bordeaux? Because they actually have both. Um, and I've tasted both and they seem to be okay. But then again, not all of them are the same. Just looking at the wine description on the screen. Ah, okay. Got you. Can you see, um, can you see us now? Okay, let's see. Okay, there you are in the corner. Oh, okay, you, this was my, my answer to my question I asked you earlier. Okay, got you. Oh Lord, Timmy, don't, don't bring no more sharp items to the table. <laughs> Feet and toes. <laughs> oh, yellow said, uh-oh. You were talking about feet and toes. That's what that was. That's what it tastes like. The first one was a lot better. I I can get with the first one. So you like the first one? Yes. Okay. Okay. I like. I, I, I prefer the first one. Yes. Um. To me, it that's like it's very very easy. Okay. So for those who do drink red, and I know I asked this question before, but if you didn't, only if you didn't answer before, put in the chat if you do drink red wine, and if you don't, why you don't. Um, because to me, this seems to, um, this reminds me of like a real good red blend. And for some reason, a blend that has Syrah in it, I don't care what is blended with, for some reason that Syrah just make everything taste good. That's what that tastes like to me. Yeah. That's pretty decent. I might, I might like the subtle one more so than the bolder ones. Yeah, but... You might like the bolder one this here because it's just more flavorful. This one is more flavorful than this one. You still get the smell, but you smell it more. You know, it's sort of like your eye doctor saying, which one looks clearer, this one or this one. You can see both of them, but one of them may be more crisp than the other one. That's how, I'm, that's how I can compare these two. This one is 2020. This one is 2030. You know, like to, just to give you a um, understanding of that. Um, I spent about, a th is that a thousand dollars trying to find the perfect Bordeaux 
but my body can't handle it. Is it that you get, I mean, what happens, Reaper, when you say it, it, it hits you every time? Is it headaches? Does it make your stomach hurt? His wallet Does it hurt. give you a hangover? Well, obviously, he spent about $1,000 looking for Bordeaux. His wallet hurt. Um, I'll talk, I'll tell you about a good Bordeaux um, uh, whiskey. I'll send it to you um, in IG. I got to go look at my list. Um, price doesn't matter. Uh, um, a two buck chuck <laughs> won the prize at a blind wine party. You are exactly right. I attended. The winner walked away <laughs> with two with two crates of wine. Well, guess it. But guess what? That is true. The, you know, the cost is really based on when it comes to wine. Is really about supply and demand, or how exclusive is it? Meaning, if you're going to get wine from a winery that only did, you know, a certain limited number of barrels and they selling it everywhere, then it's going to be, if it's real good, they're going to charge you more because one, it was a smaller batch of it. And two, they have to get it out to you. And knowing them, it might have cost them more money just to make that smaller batch because if it didn't, they would have made more. So, or maybe the grape or that particular year, like when people say that was a good year, um, basically it just means that the harvest was better than some of the other years. Maybe the grapes were more fruitful. Maybe they grew better. Maybe they were more plush. Maybe the soil was good. The weather was perfect to make it grow perfectly. So they're going to charge you more. So those are usually your $80 bottles, your $100 bottles. Um, I have yet to find a wine outside of champagne. Now, champagne will overcharge you just because of the name. Dom Perignon, I just want to say this. I've had Dom Perignon. It's just overrated for me. I can go and get me a good $12, $15 bottle, and it tastes just perfect. Um, you know, better than that Dom Perignon, but people are just used to, you know, the... the um, the um, popularity of Dom Perignon. Same thing with Moet. That's some nasty stuff. I just don't like Moet. Moet just doesn't do it for me. Moet to me reminds me, Mo Mo Moet to me is like how Merlot is to me. I don't do Merlot. I can maybe count maybe three bottles of Merlot that I've ever said I can tolerate. Everything else, I put in the same category with Chardonnay for my palate. But you don't do Merlot, because you can't even do this one. But you're right. The price, it, it, it doesn't matter what the price is. Over 20 plus wines, Reaper. Wow. Looking for and what you do with the other bottles? Did you throw them away? <laughs> Yolo said crates. <laughs> crates. Crates of that $2 wine, Yolo. Crates of that $2 wine. What they have? $22 worth of wine in there? No. Two times 12. Yeah, $24. 24 Mad bottles. Dog 2020. Ain't no man awesome. 2020. <laughs> you silly. Uh, about 30. Wow. 30 bottles. That was bigger than. Oh, you did say a crate, not a case. You did say a crate. Wow. That's that's a lot. Uber leftover. Uber, using leftover wine while cooking. Yes, you can do that. Leftover wine or the wine that you don't like. You didn't like the taste of it. Usually those are good um, with cooking. Red wine all day. Okay. Welcome, everyone. House of X. Shiraz is nasty. You don't like Shiraz? Now, I don't like Shiraz or Syrah. They're both the same. I don't like them by itself. Like, a 100% bottle of Shiraz, you're exactly right. I don't like it. But you put it in a blend? Oh, my God. I don't know what it does when it mixes with the other grapes, but it is... Delicious. It's delicious and it's awesome. Um, in blends. If I see a blend and I turn it over mm -hmm. and I see Syrah or Shiraz as the second item in there, I'm getting it because I know it's gonna be good, regardless of what else is in there. Red blends are good for newbies. You're exactly right. Yes, they are. Hey Joyce, welcome in, girl. Girl, what time is it? The, oh, it's 8:58. It ain't your bedtime just yet. What you doing? If you want more, then get your own. 
finish drinking that. Oh, you don't want that? I don't want that. Okay, well, I'll pour it in my glass and then you pour your own. Don't drink my um um Barbera. Um, yeah, you can pour your own. I don't want no feet and toes. Whatever. See, he, he he get with me and now he leave all them all them um activities in the past, you know. But I'm the one investing. Um Argentinian, Italian, Chile. You done named all the red wines, Reaper. French wine kills you said French wine kills your head and stomach. Really? Okay, okay. So do you do Chianti? Do you do Chianti um wine? Reaper. Camus, California. Camus, California. You see, Camus reminded me of the, the, the cognac, but that's C-A-M-U-S. Okay. All right. You like that one. Okay. House of X. My guess is he's saying, oh, my God, probably to the feet and toes somewhere, I'm sure. Hey, me and I, well, how you doing? How you doing? How you doing? We talking red wine tonight. Well, red wine, but this is the transition red wine. This is a transition red wine. Siraz is nasty. You say the same thing. I agree. I don't like a, a bottle of 100% of that. I just, I just can't. I just can't do it. I can't do it. Reaper agrees there. Reaper definitely agrees. Um, tasty, not nasty. <laughs> uh, it is a little tasty, but I ain't gonna say it's nasty. I ain't gonna say it's nasty neither, but it's in between. Okay, well, that's fine. Then y'all got me got me wanting to open a bottle. Well, go on and open the bottle, YOLO. Go on, open the bottle. Look, Reaper laughing. So, um, out of these two, even though he was an unexpected guest tonight, um, my thoughts, Thirsty. my thoughts on both of these are, I like them both. Um, I think that if you're transitioning to reds from whites, that, um, it depends on your taste. I'm just going to say that, um, both of these are good. Both of them are very um, fruit forward. Um, not get it twisted with sweet. I didn't say sweet, but it's fruit forward and very bold fruit. Think of it like when I say fruit, think of it if you took like pomegranate seeds and crushed them up and you drank it. You know, it's fruity, but it's not sweet. You know what I mean? But um, this one here is very bold. When it comes to the fruit, like all of the 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 smells and the aromas and the flavors of the fruit stand out tremendously in this one. Very, very good. I could drink this all day. This one here, this is this is not as bold, but it's still very, very fruit forward um, from the aroma as well as the taste um, and very easy drinking. So if you're not really ready for the boldness of the Barbera, then start off with the Nebbiolo. And um, I promise you, drink the Nebbiolo a few times. And then the next time, drink some Barbera. And I guarantee you, if you can get past these two, next thing you know, just try any other red. And you'll find that you'll go, oh, you know what? This isn't as bad as I thought. You still taste some that are nasty, but that's just what your preference is. But definitely, um, I like. Which one was your favorite? You like the the Barbera, the Barbera Diasti? Yeah, I don't like feet and toes. I don't know why you decided not to like feet and toes after you married me. So all the all, all the past heifers get all the fun, huh? I was young and dumb. That one young and dumb, you just doing that with the wrong folk. Anyway, anyway, um, let's see here. Where am I at? Where am I? Where are we? Where are we? Okay, just right here. Need sweet. Joyce, you don't need sweet. You you drink whiskey and bourbon just like I do all day, every day. You don't need no sweet wine, Joyce. That's just in your head. You, you, when you come by next time, um, you, you need to taste these. You need to that taste one. these. Yeah, 
you you can do the Barbera. You 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 be fine with that one. That you one. be fine with that one. Reaper's favorite red wine is Orange Swift Cabernet Sauvignon. Palima, Palimo or Palima? Okay. Palima. All right. Well, I have to. I'm pretty. I I have a whole this whole section in in the middle here is Cabernet Sauvignon. I probably got. <laughs> Probably about 60 bottles just in the middle section right here, but I'm pretty sure one of them is probably in there. I'm gonna look and um if I get in and it tastes good, I'll let you know. 60 to 80 dollars usually go check it out. 60 to 80 bucks. It better, it better do something that these little 20 dollars can't do. I'm just gonna let you know that, Reaper. But if it's real good, I then I'll spend it. If it if it's 60, 80 dollars good, I'll spend it for a bottle. But I'll probably be the only one drinking it. I'm not gonna share it with anybody, especially if they're not down with the the red um, wine. Write it down and go check it out. Trust me, I ain't gotta write it down. This my live. I'm gonna get what? Read, read Keisha, Keisha, read Keisha. I'm gonna get the key. Give me what's it say? Oh my God, no fun, no fun for Miss T. <laughs> Pretty Timmy. Finish your wine and give the missus a tasty treat later. That's what I'm talking about, T. I'm going to stop drinking this wine right now. I'm going to stop <laughs> drinking this wine right now. Thank you, Keisha. That's a girl right there. See what I'm saying? Looking out for, thank you for looking out for me. Uh, but Reaper, yes, I'll, I'll look that up. And when I do taste it, I'm, I'm, I'm going to send it to you in IG. That wine will slap you up hard and make your teeth beautiful. <laughs> You know what? Your sayings, Reaper, sometimes be cracking me up. Nah, not spending more than 30 bucks. You know, YOLO, I'll spend 60 to 80 bucks, but it has to be something to make me go, ooh. If it don't make me go, ooh, then I'm not spending 60, 80 bucks. Not for no, not for a bottle of wine. Now, I'll spend 60, 80 dollars for a bottle of liquor. Um, but I'm not spending sixty, eighty dollars, and even that one got to make me go. This is good. It got it, it. It has to do that. Yolo, don't go Yolo. Lord have mercy. Reaper, Reaper, you, do you cook every day? I know you do, but do you grill just so you ain't got to do no dishes, or do you grill because you just like to grill? Which one is it? Because you be making some tasty stuff, and I'm sorry, I'll be going. We'll be going on some more cruises and stuff this year. And when we do, oh, we looking you up. I will GPS your channel and find you. You put gonna make us up. something. We gonna put the drone in the air. Oh, most definitely. We gonna find you now, Reaper. We gonna find you now. We gonna find you. Somebody in these YouTube streets know where you at. And we gonna find you. Gonna make us some food, and we gonna sip some whiskey and some bourbon and call and it. We a day. coming with fork and spoon. That's right. And I, a fork and knife for me. Yeah. Fork and knife. And knife. I, don't want and knife. Knife. I don't want no pudding. I don't want no pudding. I, I want some steak. Look, he would be in there cooking some rib. I mean, he'd be cooking the good cuts too, man. I was like, oh my God, he make me so hungry. Uh, let's see. 60 to $80 on some tequila or whiskey all day. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. All right. House of X say, thank you all for coming. Basically, they saying, okay, y'all, y'all gonna go to bed. I make Drake laugh in his lyric at Keisha H. Look, Keisha, I had uh, Reaper smacking it up. I had him singing Drake's song. Um, uh, what was it? Something Baby Daddy? What's the name of it? Rich Baby Daddy. Mm -hmm. It was hilarious. That live was so doggone funny. It's ridiculous. It, Reaper, not only does he do, you know, show you what some of the best whiskey and bourbon is, the best prices. Um, the best ones that taste um, good, which ones are worth getting. But he also, um, he cooks, he grills, he does cigars, knows all about those, um, as well as fragrances. I mean, the, 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 the man just does everything. So and keep you entertained. Yes, we'll keep you entertained and hilarious. And he does ASMR, it just period. He's, his voice is just addictive. I'll just put him on a TV and walk. And just handle stuff around the house sometimes because you really not going to see his face most of the time. You see his hands and his hands is, oh, Reaper, check this out. Give me your hand. He got 
Hubby got the big hands too. So Reaper got hands that make a a a, a little uh Glen Karen glass look like it's this little, this small. These so are, these yeah. are aircraft hands. Them cannon aircraft plugs. hands, yeah. Cannon plugs. Yeah. All right. Sexy red. Shout out to sexy red and scissor. You exactly right. All right. Pretty Timmy. We My got it. All right, everybody. Thank you all so much for joining me this evening. Sorry that my live was not able to start at six o'clock today. We had to take care of some business. Um, that was top priority. But I also wanted to make sure that I gave you what I promised you, which was this transition red wine, because it's going to prepare you for the next couple of weeks of the red wines that I have lined up. So next week is going to be Pinot Noir. Um, and that one is a very good and bold um, red wine as well. Um, what do I have coming up um, this week? So um, it, I may end up changing it to Saturday night. But what, um, what we have is we have our final video from the Celebration Cruise. And we'll be following it up with our honest review about our lives. So right now, both of them are scheduled for Sunday which normally I don't go live on or even post videos on Sunday, but um, it's scheduled for that day. If we can't do Saturday night, if we do do Saturday night, it will be late. Um, it will most likely be maybe a, about um, 10 o'clock or so, 1030. Um, and uh, we'll have the, the video go at 10 and then we'll go live about 1030 on Saturday. Um, so um, thank you all. Oh, and uh, next week, Monday, um, we have Miranda from I Love Cruising. Um, her interview is on Monday, and that will be live, so stay tuned for that. And that is at 8 o'clock on Monday. And Tuesday, we are back with the Zodiac Cocktails, and we will be doing the air sign. So those are your Aries, your the Aries. No, 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 I'm sorry. That's fire signs. Air signs is Gemini. Oh, Aquarius. No, yes, no, because you're not water. You're an air sign. Aquarius, Aquarius and water. Gemini, no. You are water, but you're not of a water sign. You're an air sign. Oh, okay. So it's Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra. So that will be next Tuesday. So stay tuned, everybody. Keep on the lookout for, um, stay on the lookout for the updates. And thank you all for joining. And before I leave, Keisha says, <laughs> Always enlightening with you, Miss T. Thank you so much, Pretty Timmy. Get the, get the warm, <laughs> soapy water ready for my friend. There you go, Keisha. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Shout Reba out to you, Thanks Keisha. for entertaining. Nice job on the stream. Shout out to you too, Reba. <laughs> Catch y'all later. Oh, God. Let's have it so